So about 10 years ago, I was getting ready to be interviewed on stage in front of a couple thousand people by Lisa Gibbons from Entertainment Tonight. Well, it was supposed to be Larry King from the talk show, but uh, he got called to the White House to interview back then President Obama at the last minute. So Lisa Gibbons jumped in and uh, sort of had to prepare very, very quickly for this interview that was being broadcast around the United States in movie theaters um, around the country. And I had hundreds of people that were gonna be watching this at least that were corporate clients of mine, speech clients, and, uh, and consulting clients. And, uh, and I, I had, I don't know, three, 400 from Johnson & Johnson alone. And anyway, so Lisa Gibbons had to jump in. So <clears throat> I was being interviewed on a panel uh, with Bob Proctor and some other speakers for this movie called Beyond the Secret, which was uh, supposed to be the sequel to the hit movie, The Secret. So Lisa had to kind of go up, get up to speed really quickly because it happened overnight. So she called me into her dressing room and uh, this was kind of cool for me because to be interviewed by her because <laughs> I used to watch her on Entertainment Tonight. And uh, I always can't, okay, all right, I'll just admit it. I have a little thing for Lisa Gibbons. Okay, I'm sorry. I do, all right? <laughs> so you got me. <laughs> and um, so I was kind of thrilled that she was the one they picked to uh, at the last minute to do the interview. So she invites me into her dressing room because we were all preparing for, for this interview. And uh, we, you know, we, we figured it was, it was probably going to be like, you know, <clears throat> 50, 60,000 people are going to watch this. And then that was just a live broadcast. And so it was kind of a big deal. And so I went into her dressing room and she was really nice. And she said, you know, it's funny. She said, because I was doing the research on you guys last night and I came across you and I Googled you and I was looking you up and I've been reading your 177 Mental Toughness Secrets book for years to uh, my kids. And, they, and we love that book. And so it was just kind of a, a coincidence. And uh, so she goes, so it's great to meet you. And so let's talk about the interview. And of course, I knew she was a television pro. She's an entertainer, obviously. And uh, I said, well, here's, here's what I think. She goes, well, how do you think this ought to go? And I said, well, you know, Bob Proctor was the, was the star, in my opinion, the real star, the major star, let's say, of the movie The Secret. And he's going to be right in the middle of the panel. I'll be on the end by Les Brown. Uh, the other, another speaker, and but Bob and I have known each other for you know 25 years, and we're really, really good friends. And I know that we could potentially get into a really good back and forth with him and I if you kind of start it out. Bob and I will finish it, and I won't even have to practice with Bob because we've been doing this for 25 years. We've been on stage together 100 times over the years. He's been a mentor of mine forever and a great friend. And she said, fantastic, that's what I want. She goes, because one of the things I'm concerned about is that this could come off as just an interview and it could be boring. And remember, this is Hollywood. She said, this is, they've gotta be entertained and panel discussions are not that entertaining. And we started laughing, I said, hey, I know, I make my living giving speeches at national conventions, international conventions. I said, so you're, you're, you know, we're not quite Hollywood, but we're kind of poor man's Hollywood. We have to keep people's attention. So I totally get it. And she goes, oh good. She goes, that's great. So tell me how you see this shaking out. <clears throat> so we started going back and forth. And I said, I said, so Bob will be real serious and I'll make fun of Bob a little bit and no one else on the panel will do that, I guarantee you, because that's, that's not the relationship they have. Bob is real serious and he's taken very seriously like that. But Bob and I, I have a history of playing around you know, on stage together and having some fun. It's just the relationship we have. So it'll come off very naturally and we will, you know, we'll just start. So you throw it out there and then let Bob say something initially because he's the star and then I'll contradict Bob and we'll go back and forth. And she goes, I love this. She goes, this is perfect. You know, you have, you got, you obviously, you know, know what you're doing here on stage, and that's a great idea. And uh, so, and I, and I, I said, well, you, you know, when you talk to Bob, she was meeting with the, with different people on the panel, and her dressing room because it was last minute, and it, you know, we didn't even have time to have a meeting because you just got the call at like eleven o'clock the night before, <clears throat> and. Uh, so, uh, so, so we went back and forth and we're in the middle of it. She's like, yeah, I love everything you're saying. We talked for about a half an hour. She was fantastic, total pro, the whole thing. And it was kind of surreal to be having this conversation with her because I'd seen her on TV for like 20 years, you know, and, uh, and it was just, it was just great. She was a total pro. And so, uh, so anyway, someone with the movie walks in, um, and the, and the production overhears us and says, no, no, you can't do this. This, this, this back and forth is not what we want. We don't want any kind of conflict with the panel back and forth. And we, we both, we both looked at Lisa Gibbons and I looked at each other and said, this is entertainment. This is Hollywood. 
you know, we have to keep these people alive. We've got to keep them going. This is the way to do it. He goes, nope, absolutely not. I don't want any kind of conflict. I just want it to be a panel discussion on the content. And Lisa Gibbons looked at me and she gave me this look like, okay, you know, it's, it's your show, but this is not the way to do it. And it was not the way to do it. It was absolutely the wrong way to do it. And, uh, and it came off, frankly, I thought it came off as boring. And I was on the panel and I still think it was boring. And uh, because I don't think they knew what they were doing. They didn't realize that when you're in front of a live audience, and if you're a speaker or emerging speaker or speaking of something you really want to do and get paid to do it, remember, you have to entertain an audience or you will lose them in five minutes. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how brilliant your ideas or your solutions are. You have to entertain the audience. 80% of a keynote speech is entertainment. And when you do a panel discussion like that, as Lisa Gibbons and I were going back and forth on the same page completely, that's even more boring. I mean, that can be very boring. And frankly, it was. It was. And Bob Proctor said the same thing. I talked to Bob afterwards and I go, that's not the way to do a panel. It's, it's, it's just not the way to do it, Bob. And he goes, I know. You know, it is what it is. So <clears throat> I just wanted to share this story for a couple of reasons. One is the lesson learned, of course, um, I think the producers who spent all the money on this on this presentation and Lisa Gibbons got paid seventy five thousand dollars just to do the moderating for you know an hour I think it was two hours actually and uh, so you know the people that paid all this money they didn't really know what they were doing frankly I mean that's not that's not our business our business is entertainment no matter what it takes to entertain and Lisa Gibbons knows that but uh, the producers didn't seem to know that they're nice people but they didn't really know what they were doing and it showed as a result, and a lot of money was wasted in the process. So remember, 80% of giving speeches, presentations, panel discussions, whatever, 80% has to be entertainment. If you're an intellectual, if you're a college professor, God bless you, um, but you're not getting paid speaking fees. You know, uh, we get paid more in a week to speak than college professors. Most college professors at Harvard, Stanford, and Princeton get paid in a year. And not because obviously we're smarter, but because we can entertain an audience and people pay more for entertainment than they do for education. As sad as that might be, that's the reality of our business. So effectively, we sell what they buy. <laughs> and that is 80% entertainment.